Hello, welcome back to the Timo Boll Web Coach channel. And today we speak in English. It's a little bit strange because we have a German guy here, a German guest, one of the best players in the world and a very good friend of mine. And here he is, Dimitri Ovcharov, Dima My Ovcharov. <laughs> Where are yeah, you now? My Where are you to now? Be with you, Timo. I'm in Düsseldorf, actually. So at home. Yes, I have been in Sweden sometime and practicing there. And now we're back since a few days and yeah, getting back to normal. So we have the first question also according your practice facility in Stockholm from Martin Andersson. How do you rate the bow training facilities in Stockholm? <laughs> I've never been yeah. there. <laughs> I, you should come by. I told you. It's nice. <laughs> so, so it is about like 10 minutes from, from our home in Stockholm. And uh, it's a very, very nice facility. Like there's loads of um, older players who comes every day and train very hard. So it's a bit inspiring for me and they, they like I'm there. It's, it's a big hall with plenty of tables, good lightning, great floor. And right next tent is we have tennis and badminton. And actually, I've played tennis once with uh, Robles. So, yeah, it's fun there. I enjoy my time. So in my venue here in, in Höchst, in, the, in this little town, we have also older players. And they are also really a, an inspiration. And that's the good thing about our sport, that you can play even in a very high age. So hopefully we can go on a few more years. <laughs> yes. So next question. Let's choose one. Oh, that's a good one. Peter Nies is asking, why is it so difficult to beat Timo Ball? Not only for you, but well, for every European player. Yeah, for you, it seems I, it's I, not I, that difficult. <laughs> ah, come on. <laughs> you have no, a good I, score I, against me. <laughs> yeah, I know you too well, but still, you make my life too difficult most of the times. Um, yeah, I, I wouldn't refer that only European players struggle to play with you. I mean, surely, I mean, I think you beat like all Chinese players I know and all Asian players you have a great score with. I would refer it... Um, because of your intelligence in the game, you always change up your tactics and your placement extraordinary much. Like you never serve on the same spot twice. You never spin on the same spot twice or you never keep the same speed in your game. You play slowly, you play fast. So it's very difficult to adjust to your game. And I think that's your biggest strength and makes to basically every opponent in the world super big challenge to play with against you. Thank you. <laughs> But it's also difficult to play against you. I mean, you have one of the best serves and uh, maybe the best backhand in the world. So it's really hard to, to attack your forehand, uh, which is really not bad. I mean, it's, it's so powerful, yeah, yeah, yeah. but um, you put so much pressure with your backhand. So it's really hard for me to, to keep up to, to that. Yeah pace and also to this uh to this power so yeah, and, um, what, what 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 i could uh, add is also that you with the years also you change your game a lot like before you you played a lot of forehand running forehand old table and i feel like the last time i played you your backhand was actually stronger than your forehand so like uh, timo ball is always changing his game and uh, yeah you, you have always a surprise open for you I'm lucky I can train so much with you. So I know you may be a bit better than others. Gives me a little advantage sometimes. <laughs> I mean, it's important to, to evolve your game. And I mean, the, the whole game changed a little bit. And as everyone knows, I'm, I'm not the fastest player <laughs> anymore. But <laughs> so it's more about strategy and um, placement and yeah, tactics. So that's the key of of the game for me right now and not the the physical abilities which i had before but now it's it, it's becoming tough tougher and tougher but i still try my best but you 
But you tell me you do the cardio racing online against other people. So I think you are physically still up to it. <laughs> yeah, endurance wise, um, I'm still fit. I mean, I was on, I was cycling today. Uh, I'm yeah, doing, I'm, I'm doing a break right now for table tennis because I have a, I have a small back injury. So I'm cycling a lot, doing some physical exercises and hopefully I can come back soon to the table. When Timo is resting for a few weeks and you think <laughs> he might be out of shape, he most likely is in his best shape. So yeah, <laughs> you have to take care of what you say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sometimes it's good to rest. I mean, last season it was exhausting and we played a lot True. of tournaments and yeah. So sometimes it's not bad to have a rest, especially to become mentally fresh again. Yeah, I and have to learn that. I'm learning that, but I'm le I have to learn that more and more from you. Yeah, you are, you are a different kind of player. I, I mean, you, you like practicing, you, you have the feeling you need, you need that to play good. And, but yeah, it's a very individual sport. I mean, you can go different ways to to reach a high goal so and yeah, that yeah. makes our sport interesting yeah so let's look for another question alex is asking hi dima how did you decide to use butterfly procedures yeah pr procedures probably means uh, equipment i guess yeah yeah more yeah, or less. I think he means yeah. The equipment. Yeah. Yeah, we, we, I mean, already quite some years ago, we had the change of, we had quite some changes in our sport with, uh, with a new ball or we stopped fresh gluing. So the rubbers always changed. And I came to a point in my career where, where I felt that the butterfly equipment definitely fits me by far the best from, from all equipment. So, so I'm glad I, I got the opportunity to to sign such a long term agreement with Butterfly. And yeah, I mean, I'm from January, a Butterfly player at a really good start at the German Open by even beating Function Dong. So it shows uh, that that decision was the right one. And I'm yeah, very glad about it. So I'm also not sure about it. What kind of material are you playing right now? Is it Dignix on forehand and I'm not sure. Well, I mean, you, you know, I'm testing a lot. <laughs> but, uh, Never satisfied. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. I'm, no. I'm satisfied, but I'm always look. You never know. Maybe there's something better. You know, you have to try it out. No, and, uh, that's good. Yeah, that's in, good. In, in, when, when I start to, to use uh, all butterfly equipment, I in January start to use the Dignix uh, 09C on forehand and the uh, Dignix 05 on backend. But um, the last couple of weeks, actually the last time we, we saw us, uh, I tried the 9C on backend as well. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really, really happy with it. I won the last two Dusseldorf Masters with it. So for now, I will keep up with that and um, yeah, see how, how the competition goes in big venues when they start again. So I play the same combination, Dignix 09C on both sides. So. I was really trying hard to push butterfly in that direction to make a, a rubber, which is more sticky and a little bit more what the Chinese players are, are playing. And so far it's, it's going, it's going well, I think for both of us, yeah, it was, with, uh... with these rubbers, I mean, a lot of butterfly sponsored players changed to Dignix 09C and I think it's a really good rubber even for for amateurs or because it's not that fast but you have a lot of control a lot of spin and yeah it's it's helping it's helping a lot definitely it was a good idea of you to push uh, yeah that that kind of rubber as, as you said it has a lot of control so i felt if you are nervous in difficult situations and someone attacks you with loads of spin and quality you do a small mistake and you miss the ball. But now the ball stays longer in the rubbers and equalize the spin of your opponent a little bit. 
so you, you as you said you have more control and you you can cope with the with the spin and speed from your opponent in an easier way yeah true good job timo <laughs> <laughs> yeah so another question oh that's an interesting one darren is asking who is the best new youngster wang chu chin lin yun ju or harry moto or is there oh. another youngster coming we don't know um i don't know another one i mean truls morgard from europe i haven't played him so far so you you practiced with him a few times so what about him i practiced with him um the previous time i've been in sweden and yeah he, he have a very interesting unique game like really different than yeah an average player from europe i would say he he reminds me a little bit of the style which janove waldner played of course it's a huge way to go but he have a lot of creativity and maybe that's something they have in common he mm. he can surprise you with many yeah many really strong shots but his game is not that stable far not that stable yet comparing to Harimoto, Lin Junju or Wan Shushin. Okay. I have the feeling he has this same flat forehand with not so much rotation, which is even more difficult to block than than a topspin with a lot of or a heavy <clears throat> topspin. So it seems like Yeah and I believe if um if he can get really stable so so keep up his best possible performance um, permanently. I, I believe he can have a bright future. But yeah, it takes a lot of hard work, I believe, to to get consistency in your game. Yeah, for me, I really like the style of Lin Yun Chu. I mean, he's he's also so cre creative, and I have the feeling it's so fluid his game. It it's not that yeah. powerful and like workmanship from Harimoto, you, you can feel he's just working hard for for becoming better. And I mean, he's really unbelievable good, but Lin Yunji is the, the bigger talent for sure. Yeah, I agree on that. I think his game is extremely effortless. Mm -hmm. He he reads the way in a unique way, like he knows when to step around or when not to step around. And I remember you I, you told me when you played with him that he did things which maybe even didn't make sense, but worked out. So I, I believe <laughs> yeah. he's, he's a smart player, yeah. And yeah, I'm glad he's actually joining my team in Russia next year in Orenburg. So we'll see what, what I can learn or from such a young star and um, so I can keep up my game on the highest level. Yeah. Yeah, he's a he's a great player. I mean, Wang Chu Chin, I played him once, and yeah, he's he's a strong lefty and big forehand, and yeah, he's he's good too. I mean, all of them they are they have bright future. For sure, for sure. I think Wang Chu Chin. He wasn't so stable for a long time, even though he was playing on international events, plenty of them. But suddenly the past 12 months, he do really strong results. And I feel he really catched up with yeah, basically the best Chinese players. And yeah, his strokes are extremely powerful. One of the most powerful strokes, both sides. Mm. I know of a player, so he is definitely good too. And yeah. What is really curious is As you played also many times in the Chinese league, we we knew these guys quite early when they didn't show yeah. up, up already in the international scene. But we have seen them in the in the Chinese league, and they played already already so strong. And then they they showed up in international tournaments and they lost in qualification rounds. And that's really strange. I don't know if they are stressed or what's happening there but from the level of what they can play they are already yeah very good and i ha i have always the feeling when i saw them in the in the chinese league they can they can win tournaments already yeah 
I, I totally agree with that. Also, like Liang Chen-Kun, he played one of the best scores in the Chinese Super League for years. Yeah. And he couldn't win. He could never reach a quarterfinal at any event and mostly lost in qualification. Is something until today <laughs> I, I really can't understand. If you're such high no. level, no. why they couldn't bring it. But, I mean, it, it takes time, but, I mean, they're coming there. Most, most players most are of, coming there. Most of them, you, they finally reached the high level also internationally true true yeah maybe maybe a last word about uh, harimoto he he's maybe not as talented or effortless as lin jinju or as powerful as Wong Chuchin, but i believe his mental will to really <laughs> become big or become world champion i think his mental part is probably the strongest of all three he is really determined and that also that also is a very strong skill yeah he's He's a working horse. <laughs> he's <Yeah>. really, <laughs> it's sure. really not easy to play him. I mean, he's shouting and screaming. And I think when you play him the first time, it's it's really cruel because uh, yeah. to keep calm and keep keep your concentration against him, it's really not easy. But I mean, he's yeah. a nice guy outside of yes very nice yeah. of the table tennis box he's he's really a, a shy and nice guy and very humble and so yeah you get used to it to play him <laughs> true 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 so another question what is the winning percentage against each other so you are better in statistics than me. <laughs> wow, I'm I'm honestly I'm I'm not I'm not sure about that. I would say it's about 60 much 40 equal. for you maybe. I mean in the beginning I won Truly. more often when you were really young. Then you had a very yeah. good streak against me. True and then you came back. <laughs> <And> then... <laughs> so it's I think it's sixty forty for you, all all we together. We will check that up after our conversation. Yeah, maybe someone has the the official head to head. Head to head, yeah. So what we have here? Oh, about defenders, Jack Stahl. Hi, Hi, Timo and Dima. What do you? Th both think Shaw can ITTF do to improve the situation for players doing the defender style. Only three choppers are left in the world top 100. The crowd love to watch the attractive performance by choppers and at Timo. Um, do you remember the match against Kochi Matsushita in 2000? What have you thought while playing and losing against his extraordinary style? Yeah, I can remember this game. I think a lot of players remember his performance there. I think he 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 has beaten Kong Ling Wee, who was wow. yeah nearly unbeatable at this time, especially against defense. He beat Peter Franz also from our team. He was a killer against defense. And he okay. lost two, so I was not the only one in in that moment, and it was really one of the best defend defensive performances I've I've ever seen. He was really like a like a wall you you couldn't go through, and yeah, would be fun to watch that game again. I mean, in that time, I was not that powerful against defense and maybe also not that creative but i mean he was he was really good at that time so maybe dima you can answer this question what ittf can do <laughs> yeah i actually didn't knew you you lost against koji in the year 2000 i thought uh, you played about 200 matches again in your career against defense and only lost once against yosuke by beating him at least 20 times so uh, your game against defense is such a persistence 
you just always spin and spin and spin and never miss. So it's really <laughs> tough for the defenders against you. And what ITTF can do, I I truly think it's not um, a mistake of the ITTFs that we don't have so many world-class defenders left. I believe in order to become a, a world-class defender, you need to be extraordinarily talented and have very good coaches who, who have the capability to train you. And I believe so... Since it's so tough for defenders to to be good, um, yeah, I, I think the coaches maybe it is the coaches who who give up to to train this style, yeah. So they do that less than before, and yeah, that's why with the time there's becoming less defender coaches and less defender players. What is very unfortunate, since it's their style is so beautiful for the audience to watch. Yeah, true. I mean. There should be more defenders out there because we both like to play them, but no, yeah. Spe especially for the spectators, it would have would have been really nice. And true. Okay. Next question. What's the favorite drill of both of you guys? So what's your favorite yeah, playing exercise or? My favorite exercise, that's a good question. It's, it's one which I which I don't miss one uh, much. So <laughs> it's a regular one when <laughs> when when sometimes I, I feel not so confident or comfortable in, in my game. I try to make easier exercises like back and middle, back and forehand or forehand, middle, back and forehand, middle, foreign backhand and yeah I, I play this exercise on a quite high level and a high speed and don't miss a short time after I get more confident yeah my favorite exercise is I like to play free against backhand I mean I like to start already in the beginning with an exercise where I don't know where the ball is placed and I mean I I practiced for so many years. I've already a good rhythm in the beginning of the practice normally. And um, so free against backhand is, is a good start for me. Yeah, I thought about that, that yeah, you, right after warm up, you start immediately with uh, unregular exercises. What is, I would say, more uncommon for players, because the, the first exercise is usually one to get the rhythm and the second one to play free to backhand. I know the Chinese do that a lot by playing three points forehand and the second one free to backhand. But you are right, right there from the beginning and let's go hard and let's go free to backhand and react on that. <laughs> so yeah, I always thought about that, that you're already fast. You don't need yeah, much time the, to warm up. The problem is I don't play that many exercises. So, <laughs> so it feels a regular exercise feels a bit too easy because the second exercise I play already with with sur surf and uh, often already a free exercise with service so I have not that the, that amount of time to play too many exercises and not the energy also okay. <laughs> yeah but I have to say like it's true you do mostly I would say three exercises while other players would do maybe four or even five but the intensity when I train with you and the rest between the exercises is, is a lot more intense than, than when I practice with other players. You really are super focused, um, play ball after ball after ball. And when 10 minutes are passed, there's the change right away. So one and a half hours practice with you feels mostly like 2.30 with other players. So you get your time and intensity. Okay. Yeah, I try to, to focus for every ball and I mean, yeah, that's sometimes more important than the amount of practice. I mean, if you're always concentrated and focused in, in practice, then you don't get used to bad movements. And that's, yeah, I think my, yeah. my little secret. It's true. It's a good one. Okay, let's look out for another question. Uh, 
Who do you think the most tough Chinese player player is currently? So which is the the best one for you, Dima? Well, I I think they are if to say like Malong, Fan Shindong, Shushin, they're all extraordinary and probably on a very similar level since Malong um, had a had a knee injury and just recovering from it. And I, I saw that he actually lost the last matches he played with Shushin and Fan Shindong, what is a bit unlikely for him. But for me personally, the, I, I I think Malong is the best since when, when it comes to it, he he can increase his, his level and his capabilities. And his game is really, really, yeah, ugly to play against since he changes rhythm all the time. And yeah, I personally really have a bad score with him <laughs> and uh, a much better score with the other guys. Yeah, I th yeah, it's a dif difficult question. I mean, all of them are great players and the basketballers would say Hall of Famers. <laughs> but yeah. Um, I mean, if all if all of them play in their on their best level, I think Ma Long is the best because he has the most dangerous game, he has the best serve and the most powerful forehand. And even his backhand is much improved compared to three, four years ago. So there sure. he made the big step to, to win also the, the big titles. I mean before he, he struggled always a bit with his backhand. But now he's he's also very safe and he has more possibilities to use his forehand killer topspin. So yeah, even yeah. I have a the worst score against Fan Sendong, I think Ma Long is the the greatest of them. Yeah, he's very very unpredictable for me at least because he can change his tactics similar to you. Uh, many times of the match. Sometimes I feel like, oh, I, I got it. I, I have a chance. And then right at that moment, he right at that moment he changes tactic again and yeah, bring me out of rhythm and yeah, then I lose. Yeah. So Chloe is asking, hi from France. Salut. What was your best match? Where and against who? Wow. I I would say maybe actually this year my match uh, German Open against Fan Shandong was, was surely one of the best matches I've ever played. I was really really happy with uh, with my performance after some time where where I couldn't pull off uh, such a good result after having such great year of 17. So yeah, I think that that match was was on a very high level and I showed that I really worked on my game and improved it. So yeah, I would choose this one. Yeah, you had a lot of good games. <laughs> Thank you. So I, I think also the year during Olympics 2008, no, 2012, sorry, you were really yeah. in a unbelievable shape. So I had already in the in the training camp the feeling you were really on such a high level and was impossible to beat you already in practice and the result was was your single medal and yeah well deserved oh thank you thank you <laughs> <laughs> it was uh, yeah, it was a very very big moment yeah so my my best game i have no idea it, it's <laughs> it's 15 years ago now <laughs> No, it's, yeah, I mean, two, 2005, I won the World Cup. And yeah, I saw that I, on TV. <laughs> you were still a pupil, <laughs> I mm -hmm. guess. <laughs> no, I mean, I, I, I had a very good run in that tournament. I, I think it was the only time I could beat all three Chinese players in a row. And yeah that stays in my mind forever and very good memory for me to 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 have won that that tournament in Liège was an amazing 
crowd also there the atmosphere was amazing and so this stayed in my map in my memory yeah yeah i think uh, i can't remember that any other player at least i can't remember that beat like the three best chinese players at one event that's yeah it's an outstanding performance which goes to history <laughs> So, maybe two more questions. Yeah. So, I'm reading we have some technical problems. Live stream is barely working. Okay. Maybe we have some dropouts. I don't know why, but sorry for that. <laughs> So I'm checking another good question. Okay. Question from India. According to you both, do you think Indian team, including Sharad Kamal Satyan can reach top 10 in the world? They, is he talking about the team or the individual players? I don't know. I mean, as a team, for sure, they can reach top 10. They have a strong team. Def definitely. They, they all improved. I mean, a few years, few years ago, there was just Kamal. And now they have really a lot of talented players and they are dangerous and improving more and more and yeah top 10 for sure they they are able to perform that i don't even know what is their current team ranking um but i think it should be around they are, 10, they are high I, yeah i guess yeah yeah individually i think kamal is already he must be like your age, right? Yeah, he's one Around year about. younger. So one year younger, yeah. I think it will be tough to come in the top ten in singles right now for him. But I mean he had an amazing career with loads of great results by just lately winning the one international event after Qatar Open Oman, I think it was. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, true. I mean they have also an upcoming league they i think the federation is trying hard to evolve their players and hopefully they they can they can find one or one of them can make it to maybe top 10 top top 15 i mean this would be huge to have such a yeah. big country and this this powerhouse behind it so Hopefully they can make it. Would be good for our sport. So. Yeah, totally agree. India is such a big country, and to have a player coming into the top ten in singles would give a boost to our sport. So, last question, <laughs> Sunil, can we expect gold medal for Germany at this Olympic singles? <laughs> wow <laughs> that's a high goal i mean dima you have already bronze so your aim has to be gold now <laughs> and yeah. i would be happy about a medal in single i i have never reached it so i would be happy with with any color but i mean yeah, gold is tough i yeah. mean yeah I mean, Olympics, everything is possible. There are only two players from each country. So it's it's maybe a bit easier than to become world champion. But um, on a good day, maybe everything is possible. So you shouldn't give up before the tournament. So, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I agree on that. As you say, we have two players per country and... Liu Sang-min did it 2004 
becoming Olympic champion. I think many people wasn't expecting gold from him, but he probably believed in it and, and he made it. So I think it's a possibility, even though it's, of course, super duper tough. And um, in, in 2012, when I reached the semifinal, I was so focused on the bronze medal because I believe that is the limit of my possibilities. So, so I couldn't bring my best match against Jike at that time and maybe against Shuang after. I don't know. If I would get another chance, I believe I could be more ready. And um, also, I believe um, a player with, with your level over so many years who surely deserve the Olympic single medal. Maybe the pressure was high, and maybe even this time when not so many people will expect it from you, we can see or wait for a very big result. I would wish it to you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, so exactly one year to go, I think. Tomorrow in one yeah. year, the opening ceremony should, should be held. So hopefully it will be able. And so would be really great for us sportsmen. I mean, it's a tough time right now. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, one year to pre prepare and we will do our best to have the best shape possible. Yes. All right. So that it should be for today. I mean, thank you very much, Dima, for joining this live stream was always a pleasure like always I yeah, mean, we are was, good friends and was but in the last couple of weeks we haven't seen each other so often so yeah it was a pleasure talking to you and hopefully we can see soon yeah in the upcoming practices I agree it was uh, lots of fun to talk with you thanks for the invitation and yeah we can repeat it someday sometime and um, yeah hopefully you will come to this up soon so we can train again and maybe do a live stream like right at that table next to each other <laughs> okay maybe at the table we can show some some stuff some tricks yeah, and true. yeah let's talk about it later <laughs> okay so yeah. to the audience Bye. thanks for joining us and have a good evening morning night whatever <laughs> thanks for the questions goodbye to everybody bye bye